everybody for organizing this amazing conference. I think we are both everybody a bit dizzy now by the end of these days. So many information, so many nice, amazing people meeting around. So um, yeah, we had a lot to say and to show. Penin and I are based in Austria, in Graz, is a city with around 300,000 people. I just, we just thought it would be nice to give a little bit of a context. We are an European democracy, but uh, still very patriarchal, very Catholic, very conservative and racist. And we have a feminist collective that work with the colonial um, methodologies to bring some yeah, more critical and sensitive perspective into the city we live in. And uh, this collective we are part of started in 2013. We were known, Penin and I were not there, but we were, it started with uh, women that were not born and neither raised in this city, but living here felt the need for more spaces for migrant women to be heard, to, to, co to construct a more plural uh, city. And uh, one of the co-founders is Nayari Castillo, who is still with us today, the others are not, in, um, not anymore involved. And Penina, I came to the collective in 2015 and Penina, we met because of a project this collective was organizing in 2020, which we will show soon. Uh, let Penina, I, I'm, I'm, I was born in Brazil and I was, uh, my father is also from Portugal, my grandfather from the Amazon, um, rainforest. I mean, I'm also a bit mixed up, rooted and rerooted. I live here since 10 years. My kids were born here. So I have uh, many connections with this place. And I'm part of Ecoversity since, soft part of Ecoversity since 2019. Yeah, but uh, uh, Manish Jane and Alessandra Pomarico have been to Graz before they found the, the Ecoversities. Uh, we had a meeting here about uh, uh, unlearning contemporary art. And that's when uh, Manish and Alessandra met for the first time. I was very honored to meet them before the Ecoversities start and they have been here. So we are also connected somehow. And yeah, Penina, please introduce yourself. Yeah, hi everyone, I'm Penina and I presented yesterday um, about the uh, uh, my story and the empowerment of women. So I was born and raised in Kenya, but I moved here 2015 and I have um, a very uh, good connection here because two of my kids were born here. One is born in Kenya, but it's really beautiful how I met uh, uh, Daniela and the group and uh, the city of Graz. It's a small city, but in the cultural in a way. And it's really beautiful and, and we have so many uh, people who have the same visions and ideas. And also we are uh, with Daniela have been doing some workshops and we've been doing some um, uh, projects about indigenous people, how rooted we were, we are, and how connected we are to one another. And um, I, this is my first time at Ecoversities and I, I got an email when I was in Kenya. Uh, I was just in Kenya recently to visit my family and to do some projects back in Kenya. So I got an email and invitation uh, from uh, uh, Dan Daniel. And he said that it's Daniela who, uh, who referred me and I was like, then I'm at the right place. And I'm so glad that I've been here for four days and I see the spirit and the energy from every, I mean, I just join a room and it's like I'm connected. It's amazing. So what we are going to talk about also is about uh, futurism, ancestral futurism. I mean, what type of ancestors, future ancestors do we want to be or what does it mean? So I'm looking forward to all of the discussion and to be with all of you beautiful people around the world and feel free and we are we are entangled <laughs> thank you 
So we thought uh, one of the formats we have in this collective since uh, 2013 in the city was called the Weave Salon, a feminist salon, how it started. And the last, uh, and we embarked in this idea of the ancestral futurism, in fact, last year. I will show a bit of the genealogy as we are artists working in the cultural field. We have lots of images to share, maybe too much. If it's too much, you say stop. But we said to get the mood because our collective is called the Daily Rhythms Collective. There's also a lot with sounds. And in, um, so I will show a, a, a video we did last year. Our last weave a session was during the lockdown. So we had no public and we came into more of this idea. <laughs> oh, this was Mandarin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'll show this video now, no talk, and then uh, we um, talk later. First sugar refinery in South Korea, and the 
this was the start that Shulam came and put and everywhere put every meal and every drink. This was just a clip from our last event. I don't know if someone wants to comment, say your impressions or... It was beautiful and, and incredible joy. It was hard to hear on the, between all of the things, there was a lot of high noise. So it's hard to hear the voices. So I'd like to hear see the whole thing sometime, but it was wonderful and very happy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna put subtitles, in fact, because we didn't have a microphone. This is not finished, uh, this piece, but we were uh, dealing with the issue of sugar and, colon and colonialism and our personal stories and the uh, uh, like I'm from Brazil, where there were sugar plantations, where the main first plantations and Otto, you saw him, he's of our collective, he's from Cuba and Cuba was systematically pure sugar. And then our friend from Hyojin from Korea, she said she grew up in Germany, but with a Korean family. So she said there were no sugar in Korean food until recently, she learned also in the exhibition when sugar was introduced. So our, met, our technique of working in this is like, as Bio says, making sanctuary, weaving our stories, weaving our past, re remembering and retelling the past in a wider context. Penina can say again what she said about her sugar story, how she connected. Yeah. Um... About the sugar uh, story, how we entangled, how we connect, how we weaved from uh, different uh, backgrounds. I come from Kenya, from a very traditional society, and sugar was not something that I knew during my childhood. The only sugar I knew was the honey, and I was talking about uh, there was a bird that we follow, and it makes some sound, and you know that it's taking you to where honey is. And that's the beauty of nature. That's why we say you have to live in nature to understand nature. So growing up as a Samburu Maasai kid, I knew that this bird will take me to where the honey is. And then we, we will hunt honey and we can use honey for, for tea, for, uh, for milk, you know, when we make some uh, traditional yogurt. So that's the only thing that I knew about sugar until someone from my village started working in Nairobi as a, as a security guard or my dad started working with students from America and he could pick them from Nairobi, which is like nine hours drive from my village. And they started bringing these sweet things like candies, like, uh, like a, a, a kilo 
of sugar and people started being curious you know they got this curiosity and started using sugar from the city and now it's a common thing so it's amazing how we uh, weaved together from different backgrounds from different cultures but we we got connected by sugar together and we started sharing our ideas or our stories about sugar how i came uh, to know sugar of course there's sugar plantation in kenya but it was uh, because of the british colonization when they colonized kenya 19th century then the, the sugar plantation became you know it started growing because now we we can the, the country can ship uh, brown sugar uh, to other parts of uh, of the world so because of colonial um, uh, you know we are we are still healing the colonial wounds so some things like this came out of from colonial um, uh, era yeah yeah, so I will share the, the, this was a teaser from this one work we are doing now, and uh, I will share the tease, uh, our conceptualizations on the idea of ancestral futurism quickly and how we have been working also from a pedagogical point of view with our group and in the culture scene. I'll share again the screen. So uh, can you see it? The screen? Yeah, cool. Okay, let me see how I can manage it. Um, okay, so our idea of ancestral futurism is, uh, well, we have heard this term in other places and it's, this is how we work with it. Uh, so what our ancestors are telling us and as Penina said, which kind of ancestors do we want to be? And this means to bring together the ideas of the cultures we come from, where the cultures we live in, and which cultures are we co-creating while we live together. So this, uh, I, this, here today, we also would like to invite you to think of it, and it's how we are working in the city here, uh, ancestral futurism as an invitation to co-create voicing exercises, as you saw in the film, that was a spontaneous voicing of our memories and of our feelings. And also you will see in the next slides how to create collective rituals that explore our self-awareness and ways to express it, it artistically, how we entangle our memories and our stories in an expanded form of temporalities, expanded form and temporalities of being and belonging. So that we create rituals that are cross-cultural, that bring cultures together. So how this all started was the first entanglement workshop in 2020. During the pandemic, we were supposed to have indigenous people from the Amazon coming to also host this space with us. It was not possible. This is the group that came together. That's when Penina and I met for the first time. And this is sculpture she made uh, here in the front piece. It's called Family Tree. And uh, the invitation for this workshop was to think how can we bring together ancestral knowledge, indigenous knowledge, indigenous way of knowing with uh, our advanced technological, uh, urbanized, digitalized, globalized world. So we got the metaphor of this is a, a, a roundabout in the south exit, exit of the city. You see this eight shape inviting us to think of these infinite relationships and these loops we are going through in these contradictions of putting things against each other, our duality, and we said, how can we bring this together? This was the invitation of this workshop. And we created this co-creation methodology where we had people from different backgrounds, writers, dancers, students, uh, artists, uh, different people coming to bring uh, from different cultural backgrounds, also different languages work together and we brought also local knowledge, Herr Ritz, this, this old uh, man here. He's one of the uh, late uh, last uh, weavers from the city of Graz. He's doing, uh, he was co uh, repairing furniture and doing baskets, but his profession died here. And he gave us the last pieces of, I don't know how to say this material in English, Graz, uh, Weide in German. 
And this other guy, he's the other one who gave us material. He also taught Pinyin and I and our friends how to weave a, a basket because this knowledge here is dying. You know, in Europe, everything is highly uh, regulated, highly expensive with all the taxes. So all the baskets and all the materials that are woven here are coming from the global south now. And the old men who still have this knowledge are dying. Basically, this here, who you see in this image, he's doing this workshop just as in uh, like occupational therapy. This is something that is dying. So we wanted to bring out this knowledge that's dying here with the knowledge from indigenous peoples. Penina brought this amazing weaving bird from her village. Her, when we were here working, her brother photographed the real a weaver bird uh, to inspire us. And also we worked with emergent uh, things. Uh, when we were working in this institute, the guys were cutting the trees outside and Penina got excited. They're cutting the trees, let's build a manata. You wanna go step in for the manata, Penina? Yeah, so um, the manata is a traditional Samburu Maasai hat. It's, it's made of wood and uh, walls uh, um, uh, with the mud, uh, uh, a mixture of uh, cow dung and, um, and soil. And this particular manata we made here, I mean, I was so, being, being a, a girl from the nature, I felt so bad that they are cutting the trees and they are not using the, the the leaves and everything. So I told them we can make a temporary manata and a temporary manata for me, uh, it, it brought back the childhood memories where I, I moved with my parents from one place to another looking for greener pastures for our animals because we are pastoralists. We keep cows, sheep, goats. And, and as I told you before, we are people of the nature. We belong to the universe. So we have, we don't have a, a particular place that we call it ours. Okay, we have ancestral land, but we can move from one place to another and the universe is our home. So wherever you, you move, like let's say uh, for a day where the darkness finds you, you stay there. There is where the universe wants you to live. It's your place. So you build a temporary manata and you sleep there. You just need to make a fire to put the wild animals away. So I came up with this idea, we can make a small manata and, and we made our manata and it was really beautiful because it, it survived so many storms as, as, as basic as it is right now. It survived so many storms and it got so dry uh, during the summer, but there was this one beautiful uh, green leaf that couldn't uh, get dry. So it means that my ancestors are living uh, here. And I felt that I, I am a daughter of the universe and the universe uh, sent me, uh, um, sent me a, a sign. So this was just something that came up uh, with this. And also it was very special because in my culture, only women build houses. Men, it's a taboo for men to build houses. So yeah, also, yeah, Otto was here and this hands for mine and Otto and I could send to my family and say that for the first time a man was building a house with me and they were so impressed and it was a history for me and it's it's very special uh, that that also brought the sense of me um, uh, trying to to make my community work together there's nothing to say man women we work together as a community so this entanglement here uh, was very special and very close to my heart. Yeah, and, and we also built, uh, yeah, I think every, it was very close to everybody's heart. Everybody who worked here was really uh, amazed by the process because we don't weave and we don't build so much with our hands. This guy's an architect. Uh, and he was really de uh, delighted. So this was the first prototype. We did the first sculpture of the weaving uh, weaver bird nest. 
which you will see became really big and we installed then in that roundabout I showed in the beginning. And we did this uh, Philerotarius socius is a type of bird, is one of the few birds that build a communitarian nest. And that was our inspiration and metaphor to build a nest that different species can live in. And uh, in our research was really beautiful. When we placed in the Autobahn, in the, uh, how do you call it in English, in the rail, uh, the, how do you call it? Forgot. Highway. Freeway, yeah. Yeah, thank you, right? Uh, it was like a kind of strange object there. But uh, we related, uh, you will see later, we related it then. It took one year for us to build, so we just finished the sculpture in April this year. And then the next co-creation workshop happened. And we decided the next year, this year, to work with threads. And we got different natural threads to work with. And we decided to work with stones from the northern exit of the city. These are calc stones from these, uh, how do you call it in English? Quarry, stone quarry, right? They are this mount there is a mountain that is disappearing every year. They are taking out for construction sites to construct the city. So. Uh, we collected it and we create also an ancestral futuristic ritual. This is Otto uh, and this is our material uh, that he, we made a video. This is a video piece that you can then, it will be available soon also in our Vimeo site. So it was very important also to relate to the extractivist industries and our stories coming from migration of backgrounds. And, this was a beautiful piece that we did. So to collect the stone and bring it to, to the same exhibition space to this, it's called the Afro, Afro Asian Institute in Graz. It works with an institute that works with the Global South since 50 years here in the city, trying to promote intercultural dialogue and so on. So the act of weaving this structure, this other kind of nest, also was a space to weave our stories again in a deeper uh, sense. We were working together one week doing building this um, structure and this near with Penina now we have Esther. Esther is born to a migrant Yoruba family who migrated from Nigeria to Austria in the late 70s, beginning of the 80s. She was born here. And we have to say that the black diaspora in, in, in Austria is still not uh, so uh, welcome. And it's a very complex and identitarian situation to be born here. Uh, her father was a worker in a, he had to struggle to, to have his seven kids. So we spend all the time weaving these and telling this story, these wounds, these difficulties and finding commonalities also because in the case of uh, Esther, uh, Otto is, as I said before, from Cuba and I'm from Brazil and we have our ancestrality also connect to Yoruba culture because of the Black Atlantic triangulation during the colonial times. I mean, they, I don't know if you're familiar, but in Brazil we have Candomblé, which is the variation of the Yoruba religion into how it developed in the Brazilian country. And in Cuba, you have Santeria, which is also a religion that also derived from uh, Yoruba. We have the same Orishas, like Yemanja, Eshu. Uh, uh, Bayo is always talking about them, and I, uh, uh, I feel familiar. I know the, the Pantheon Yoruba, all the gods and goddesses. Also, me being in white, I grew up in this uh, uh, syncretic uh, environment, and I'm, I have my my daughter was born in the day of Yemanja, and I was very honored to have her born in the day of the god of the sea, goddess of the sea. So this structure we wove last year became also this hosting space for, for coming together, spending time together, as we are doing here in this conference, but physically in a small scale. First, it was a space for us, an intimate, safe, brave space for the people participating in the workshop. Um, and later it became also a space for showing to the uh, a wider cultural uh, audience. So we had this opening, it was full of people and we did a small performance. Otto repeated the performance he had done in the stone quarry and Penina. Uh, we also said in the beginning, we are the granddaughters of the witches you could not burn. 
uh, and uh, bringing uh, our in, in, in this case I don't I, I saw before we were working with the you will see further the, in the back there is a Kayapo indigenous girl it's also complex weaving with the city of grass we won't have time to go through now but so we were also making a homage to the indigenous populations of Brazil especially the Kayapo and Penina got the stage to speak we have a video. This is uh, unfortunately in German, by now, and but it will be available soon. And just to go quickly, so we have time to talk in the end. And then we invited Antonio Briseño, who is an amazing Venezuelan photographer who has uh, uh, captured the cosmogony and the sacred, the representation of the sacred of the indigenous peoples of Abeyala. So he went from from Mexico to to the Kayapo, to, to the Andes. He has tried to, to also to, to, to visit people from different bioregions, so from the desert, from the jungle, from the mountain, from the sea. And he gave, a, gave us a lecture. We also had some musicians from, from Chile singing from the Mapuche people. And this is his lecture. I shared before with Eileen the video. This video is very beautiful. It's called Stories from Abigala, where he's showing his, documenta his documentation of the sacred. So this was a rather way of woven. And in the end, Penina said very, something very beautiful. Do you want to say, Penina, about the roots and the branches? No? Yeah, um, I, uh, I've participated in so many um, um, talks about the roots and cultures, but I, I remember that I feel like uh, there are branches. People don't talk about branches and maybe we are the branches. I am in Europe, my roots are in Africa, but why can people speak about branches? So what is uh, what are these branches they cut from the roots? Like when a tree is cut, okay, the roots stay uh, back there, but there are these branches that are spreading uh, uh, around the earth. And being a, a daughter of indigenous tribe, what do I want um, to leave? What legacy do I want to leave behind? I don't want to be a branch that was cut and, and just disappeared. I would like that my branch can decompose one day uh, uh, under the earth and reconnect with the roots that I left behind. So I, I talked about the branches, which is uh, uh, because everyone was concentrating on the roots and um, I was like, what about the branches? Why can't we talk about the branches as well? Yeah, this video is in English. I will share in the in the chat later. Now I cannot multitask, but we installed some of the photos from Antonio Briseño of indigenous peoples from the Americas or from Abigala in the roundabout on the other side of the eight curve. And this is the guardian of the pathways. Uh, so this was from the Puma people from Venezuela. So we were very honored to bring these guardians here to the highways. And this was the inspiration uh, to work how with these amazing women, how to weave our stories together. And we created also in a project last year called the School of the We in the Rotor Gallery. We create a study cabinet of Professor Gede Ewe Eko. This is the Yoruba name for the banana tree. You see the banana here, she's the teacher of this room. She's, uh, this room is inviting us to learn from what the plants and our ancestors has to say, it's a cabinet of ancestr ancestrality and there, uh, the group from the workshop, Otto and Venin and I and Esther and Katja, we worked there to develop our new piece and some things become this way of redoing our rituals. This was my encounter with Otto after 10 years, he's like my brother. And we had this moment we self-made based on our Yoruba roots, this idea of cleaning, so we, and, I, and my daughter uh, got the water from that ritual and she wanted to water the, this, this forest, which is dying in, in, in Germany. It's the driest area from Germany. Anyway, different. So we, this cabinet is full of things. Here you see the book I read in the opening from David Kopenhauer, The Following Sky. So this always, it, we, we try to bring it somehow together. Here you see the uh, images from India, from Sarawaj University. Here you see 
my notebook from the Echo Versities Gathering 2019, the Zapatistas are here, the other book. This cabinet became a place, a learning, temporary learning space where all these, these influences are coming. This is about the, the Sweet River I mentioned, which was dead by the mining company that exploded, the dam which exploded 2015 and so on. So many things from the, the uh, there was so the free soil reader Alessandro Pomarico brought from New York. So these are objects that we, for all us, are sacred. Like Yeo was saying yesterday, we have also uh, our own uh, objects and what is meaningful for us. So we brought this together and our next piece was, we were invited last October to participate in a place called, the, in a event called the Market of the Future. Uh, this is discussing, uh, uh, positive initiatives, this is how to, how to repair the future, how to make a better future. And um, yeah, so there were many solidarity uh, uh, projects here, but mostly uh, everybody's from Austria in this market of the future. And it was our intention to bring some other perspectives of the sacred. It was, I mean, to say it is very rational, everything they were doing is just like, agroforesting and uh, uh, I don't know, various initiatives that were operating in the system as we expect. So we thought we have to bring a bit another dimension to it and this inner call and our inner participation. So Penina offered her blessings and it became the cover and the announcement of the, of the event. And we did a performance called The Call and we invited these people who are coming to the market of the future were very busy in, in trying to reduce the CO2 emissions and all these things. Uh, we invited them to join us in a collective ritual where we brought our different stuff together. I'll go quickly so we have time to talk. Penin was the master of ceremony and we built a collective altar. Uh, and this uh, pink uh, uh, grass became our new uh, Totten, and uh, and everyone tried to and we tried to connect with our backgrounds and our objects and our ideas and and create and th this is how we look like now our collective, we became a transcultural, uh, uh, post futuristic I don't know ancestral futuristic thing but it it was not planned right it came out through this process, and then I come back to the to the place we were before. And just to show, and this is Tillman, our video master. And yeah, so I share here the, this is our name of our collective and the links. And yeah, so I stop sharing and we can have some time to talk. Thank you. Does anybody want to say something comes to your mind? Does it have, what do you? It's just have? so amazing. I have, don't have words yet. It was so beautiful in so many ways. And all this is happening in Graz. It's very interesting. The branches, like you said, Panina are spreading everywhere. And I spent the first part of the morning in Brazil with all my Brazilian friends. This is the most moving morning ever. So wonderful work, just amazing. Now I want to go to Brazil and Graz. <laughs> Thank you and so you much. You find the places, one place in the other, right? It's not so easy. The South is in the North, the North is in the South. We are all yeah. mixed. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you. And you're welcome, of course. You're so welcome to come to Graz. Well, I'm going to go to Europe for sure, to Ireland and Scotland. And yeah, now I have friends everywhere. So I will make it to Graz somehow. Yeah. So anybody who comes, please write us. We host, we like to host and we organize a new opportunity to entangle and weave. Yeah. Can you put our contact, the best contact? I, agree. I wanted to put the contact. I will share here. For all of us who are going to come visit in Graz. <laughs> Okay, let me see. 
not so quick in so I'm sharing here the contacts to our collective if it works I don't know oh I cannot find my color. I, sh I show no, now that the, it's not in the chat yet. It's not working now because I have it black and white. I have this is the work from Briseño we mentioned. Wait a minute. Now it's there. No, but this is not our. Uh, this is our collective website. And here you find all a, a little information about what we've been doing. So I don't know if we uh, uh, people don't want to speak in the big group, but maybe can ask Delaine if we can share like some small breakout rooms, and you can come up with some weaving local rituals to create. I don't know if we don't have so much time, but five minutes. To, I don't know. Delaine is not there. Maybe. Okay, so I'll show nobody say something. I have an image. Huh? Delaney was having some trouble with her computer, but if you want me to make breakouts, I can. Can you do people like to talk a little bit and exchange among themselves? Yeah. Just <laughs> no reactions. Hard to read the room when everyone's videos are off. <laughs> you did such a wonderful job thinking about trying to do something in five minutes was overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, maybe not enough time. Okay, so I show one image I have now still I forgot because yesterday, uh, yesterday uh, we had a um, talk with Foresta Collective, and we are talking about this meditative work. I don't know if any of you would be there. So I brought this work of a friend of ours. Uh, uh, she's called Katerine Grau, and she has this amazing work I would like to share with you, call it The Cosmos from the Perspective of the Corn Root. I mentioned that yesterday. I thought maybe I showed the image today because she made this kind of hat, and this is an invitation to put your head in the in the, <laughs> on the ground and make an inverted, uh, how do you call it? And, you know, for people who don't know how to entangle and uh, have this conversation with modern humans, sometimes art helps to find a way. So I just wanted to drop that image here too. Yeah. So Daniela, what is the future of this work? Where does it go from here? What what uh, what lies ahead? Any any seeds or thoughts on that? Yeah, we are trying now to get funding to continue with this weave project. This year we have the entanglement workshop going again uh, on on hopefully this summer again, so we can bring the core group and new participants. Uh, and the project this year is called um, listening to, uh, how is it called? Dancing, Dancing with the Rivers, because we have a beautiful river here in the city and uh, we want to, and there has been a new power uh, electro plant that became slower, many issues around this issue, many trees were taken away and we want to work on that river to do a one weave there. So there's one woman who lives in, in Chile and, and she, she's a musician and a performer. She might come to dance and to with the river with us this year. We, have, we, we applied for some funding now, we are waiting, but we wanna proceed with the WEAVE uh, project in general, inviting people and uh, yeah, if you are interested in contributing, if you have ideas, you can always write to us and maybe we will start to do more digital uh, uh, 
work as well. Like this video, we showed you the teaser is already not, it's um, not finished yet. We are not so high tech, but yeah, we wanna keep working. Now, next week we have the uh, Women's Day. Penin and I will be there. Uh, this we're making stickers we make stickers we have now stickers from strong women voices that are not being heard so we have like black feminism like audrey lord and angela davis and and indigenous voices from abiala so this is coming up next week we're going to be in the streets talking to the people we have a good alliance in the city the woman movement here is growing came out from the old weaves the old weaves alone and now we, I don't know, we, Penina becomes our, uh, how to say, speaks uh, woman, spokeswoman, how to call it in English. <laughs> she yes. goes there, she's working on the radio. Maybe we can quickly talk about your work on the free radio. Uh, yeah, I am working also as a part-time, but perhaps in two weeks time, I will be working regularly at the radio. Uh, uh, it's a free radio called Radio Helsinki, but it has nothing to do with Finland. It's based in Graz, and I, I work as a moderator. I have a, I have a project called um, a European Union project called uh, Snapshot from the Borders, and it has it deals with anything to do with immigration, with the refugees, with just borders. Talk about borders, and we are in. So this time next week um, at the Women's International Women's Day, we will be. I will be working with Danielle, of course, with our collective, and also at the radio interviewing people, different types of uh, of organizations, and maybe do some collaboration with a local radio in my region to connect at home also, and, and yeah. So that's what I do, but I'm, I'm looking forward to have my own uh, show, radio show soon, and it will be called Tales of a Samburu Woman. <laughs> yeah, so I'm looking forward for this, and maybe I can share a lot of uh, our uh, collective work and what we are doing and, and indigenous people. Uh, it doesn't mean that we are the voiceless people. We are voice. We just need opportunities to be heard. So I will be focusing on the indigenous uh, people and indigenous knowledge and yeah, and women as well and community. <laughs> Maybe we should mention, we also part Penin and I from another collective called the Indigenous Rights Collective in Graz. And they, they started this program with the Radio Helsinki three years ago about the 12th of October, which is, uh, the day Columbus arrived or invaded Abigala, uh, the American continent, and it has been celebrated by the mainstream as the Columbus Day or different names in, in throughout the Spanish speaking world and in Spain and even in the US as a commemoration of the invasion of the discovery as they call, but we in the indigenous people and we in solidarity uh, have the the days of indigenous resistance. So every 12th of October, now we make a program in Radio Helsinki with this other collective we participate. And uh, uh, last year, uh, Ku Kahala Kau from one of the founders of the Ecoversity, she was there. And I have to say, we had a professor, we love him from the unit, he's a the colonial professor here, but he was taking so much time and he was talking so much. And in the end, because uh, Ku made a enchant, a uh, chant to open the space, but in the end, we just had uh, this radio program is very strict with the time. So she could not sing her uh, to close. And she got so upset and we had this uh, discussion with the whole radio afterwards, Ku in Hawaii and we in Facebook and WhatsApp and discussing with the whole Radio Helsinki, you white European men just and Europeans in general don't have, don't, don't give time for the sacred, don't give time to start things and finish things. You just uh, rush through, cannot be. And Ku was really loud and it was beautiful because then we made a program about Hawaii Independence Day in November on with her because she speaks German, her mother is from Germany. And she speaks an amazing German, so we had this uh, also bring into the radio some uh, 
discussions about the colonization of Hawaii by the US and yeah. Maybe Penina can make a closing chant uh, talking about it. We didn't do in the beginning, but we can do in the end. Spontaneously, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, traditionally, <laughs> in my culture, I'm a very traditional person <laughs> living in a modern world. And uh, whenever we start a meeting or we end, we say uh, the, the blessing, the Samburu blessing is called Mayan. And uh, as I said from the opening, uh, that we believe, you know, everyone has their own beliefs and what they believe in. So Samburu people believe that nature is our religion and uh, nature is a woman because it's only a woman who can create life inside her and can give birth to, to life. And, and so we, we have a goddess called Ngai and we believe Ngai, Ngai is in every person, in every creature, in the nature. We look at the mountains and we know that there is Ngai and I look at your faces, each one of you, and I know that Ngai is, is there. And so maybe I can give the blessings uh, afterwards. I don't know if the time is already it's up, huh? Yeah, I think it would be perfect if someone else want to say something still, or can you give us a blessing to close? Go for the blessings, Penina. Thank you. Okay, so uh, uh, Samburu, we, 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 there's no me in Samburu, it's always we. So when we give the blessings, we are together, we are connected together because it's a way of uh, telling uh, like Ngai should be present in every uh, word that comes out of my mouth. Ngai should be present in every face that I look in the world, wherever I go. And, 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 and so when I say a blessing, you, you pronounce Ngai. So it, it, it's if you're comfortable with, of course, so when I say Ngai Taramata, you say Ngai, it's like a rhythm. Also, it's the same as our daily rhythm. Everything is go, flows in a rhythm. You know, we have this rhythm, rhythmic uh, flow. So when I say Ngai Taramata, Ngai, Lorere, Ngai, it's like a rhythm. It's like we are singing, but it's a prayer. And it comes from our heart. So you just concentrate with your heart and just say Ngai and Every word that comes from my mouth is connected with every word that comes from your heart and it flows to the universe. So it will be good if we can, we can unmute ourselves and then so I can hear and feel you. So, Ngai Taramata. Guy. 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 Pangasa, Thank you very much. It's very Gai. short, but go straight to the heart. <laughs> Thank mm. you to each one of you. Thank you, everybody.